those three sectors, the, the water, food, and energy, those sectors are key for human survival. And uh, the more people we are, the more pressure on those resources, the stronger the interlinkages become. The three elements are really uh, closely linked. You can't basically look at any sector in isolation. If you take the water sector, there's really close links with the energy sector. If you take the energy sector, there's close links with the food sector. And the food sector also, you can't just look at, at the food sector in, in, in isolation. Illustrating example is, is the energy sector. Now, say if a European government or some government say, okay, we would like to have 10% of our energy from biofuels, then that has enormous implications for the water sector, but also for the food sector. Because the food sector is basically competing or can be competing for the same uh, land resources and, and water resources. So it takes enormous quantities of water uh, um, to, to produce biofuels, but also to produce food. So you see that those kind of li links are, are strong. And uh, you see that uh, many decisions that relate to water and to water management are actually taken outside of the water sector. So that is why it is really important that you look at those three sectors in, uh, in, in as, as one unit and, and in, in interlinkages between those sectors. We all know that, that because of the population growth, because of changes in diets, uh, maybe some people say that, the, some estimates say that, that we nearly need to double the food production. But, of course, with the same resources, we don't have more resources than we have. So that resources are energy and those resources are water. So we need to produce nearly twice as much food with the same, kind of, the same amount of water and the same amount of energy. We do some research in, uh, in uh, Ethiopia, spate irrigation they call it. Uh, so in a, in a, on a certain uh, time uh, in the year you get this, this floods and the rest of the year the, the river is basically dry. So if the flood come, the farmers they try to get that flood, direct that flood onto their fields to, uh, to produce one crop, uh, uh, one crop uh, per year. So without that water, without those flesh floods, they would have basically no food production except maybe uh, livestock production. So of course if the water is, is on the field, it also infiltrates. So you get also a, a replenishment of uh, uh, shallow groundwater. And that shallow groundwater is then again used for, for domestic purposes. So you see a, a multiple uses of, of water resources there. I do think it's it's an incredible, uh, important topic, and uh, you see that there's there's a lot of attention also from from well many countries, many. Uh, so we are quite fortunate here in UNESCO IT to have so many good uh, MSc students, good PhD candidates, uh, who all well uh, put give their little contribution to this huge uh, global problem. Thank you.